So in July, the website WikiLeaks made available over 70,000 documents taken from the Afghanistan conflict. It was hailed and condemned as one of the biggest leaks in US military history. The leak was made very public by three newspapers, The Guardian in the UK, <coughs> Der Spiegel in Germany, and The New York Times here in the US. Um, they pulled an incredible amount of data out of this. Um, <coughs> so it was a big win for data journalism. They pulled the stories directly out of the, the data sets, and they provided an incredible, um, <coughs> an incredible service for us as they validated the information contained in this website. So on the same day that the story was released in the newspapers, uh, the WikiLeaks website made available the whole data set for you to download. So it comes in a number of uh, easy to use formats, and you can download it without any strings attached. And this data set is incredibly detailed. So every event comes with um, date and uh, location information. It comes with a, a large amount of report summary text written in free English. So we decided what kind of stories we could pull out of this data. So this is Harlan Harris, Drew Conway, myself, and John Miles White. And our aim was to try and provide something that the newspapers don't, and that's open analysis. So all of the work that we've done is based on open data. All of the media we've created as part of this project has released Creative Commons. And all of the source code that we've created is released open source, which means that you can view and change it. So we went on to the Bitly hackathon in August, and we hacked on this data uh, until they kicked us out. So everything you're going to see tonight is done in one evening a bit. So this shows the enemy activity report count from 2004 till the end of 2009. You can see very clear temp seasonal trend where activity drops at the end of every year. And you can see a huge surge in activity in 2009. This shows the location of every event on a map of Afghanistan. You can see that most of the activity is around Kandahar in the south, Kabul in the north, and along the Pakistan border. So this shows the intensity of words that occur in the summary text more than you would expect. So the word children appears everywhere there's conflict. The word sniper is localized to this river valley in the south. So this shows the topics of the summaries pulled out from analysis of the summary text. IED is mentioned all over the country. Medevac is mentioned in the south, police in the north, devil in the west. So this is an animation of the intensity of explosive hazard events in 2004. You can see sporadic activity around Kandahar in the south and then around Kabul and the Pakistan border. So this shows the same map, except this time it's in 2009. You can see a massive build-up in activity all across the countries, in all of the major settlements and along the major roads that ring the country. So we released a video like this uh, onto Vimeo, and it received over 30,000 views in less than a week. It shows there's a really strong public thirst for this kind of visualization, especially for basic visualizations that capture essential aspects of the conflict. All of this analysis was done using an open source language called R. And getting involved in this kind of um, project is incredibly easy. New York City has an incredible wealth of statisticians, of data miners, and data journalists. So no matter what your view is of this conflict, or on the release of this data set to the public, it represents a unique opportunity for you to examine first-hand evidence for an ongoing conflict, completely unmediated. So everything we've done is up on GitHub. Uh, if you don't like what we've done, if you think something fishy is going on, then you can go ahead and have a look at it. If you want to ask your own questions of this data set, you can use our code as a basis to ask your own questions. The internet finally gives us the opportunity to debunk this famous quote and put repeatable statistics into the hands of anybody that's interested. I think that asking the questions that we think are important <coughs> is fundamental for a participatory 
democratic society. Thanks very much.